You all right? Welcome to Living Life Fast. Thanks Cheers. for coming down. Mazda RX-7. Yeah. Need for speed. <laughs> That's Something what comes like to my head. Something like that. Yeah. I used to play every Need for Speed and this was the car I always used to choose, man. Uh, when were these released? Uh, what was it? 92, 93 yeah, to so 2002? The F yeah, the FD's 93. All the yeah. way up to 2002. Three generations. Yeah, this, this is the is third. third gen. Yeah, yeah, this is an RS. Um, it's a facelift as well. Yeah, latest version. Ninety nine spec. Yeah. Ninety nine. Yeah. Yeah. And um, in sort of form, what are they like? A one point three rotary engine. Yeah. No piston scans. Twin rotor, a one point three. Yeah. Um, people like to go for the three rotor from the Cosmo. Yeah. Um, but yeah, two rotor in all the RX sevens and the RX eights. And um, these were known to be one of the best handling. I think some people do still say they're yeah, like they, brilliant, they well balanced from, cars, did not they? Yeah, from factory they had 50 50 weight distribution, mm -hmm. so they're quite balanced. 12, uh, 12 50 yeah, kilos. 1200 kgs, yeah. Yeah, so. rear wheel drive. Yeah. And a twin turbo? Scroll, yeah, scroll. standard there, twin turbo, yeah. Okay. And similar to the BMs where one turbo comes in and yeah. then the other one sequential setup. Maintains yeah. the boost. Mm -hmm. What is it you've done to the car then? So this one's not quite stock. And the engine bay, I've changed. Basically, the twin turbo setup. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done a single conversion. Engine is still standard as such, like it's never been taken apart, so it's still on what they call stock ports. Okay. Um, but yeah, everything else apart from that, so all the bolt ons has been changed. Yeah. So it's, it's ready to run big horsepower basically. How do you build the engines? Can you build these? Yeah, yeah, so they're, they're totally different from piston engines. There's yeah. nothing, there's only three moving parts, so it's mm -hmm. two rotors and one shaft going through the middle. Right. Um, so when obviously when you build it, you you basically increase all the port sizes. Okay. okay. Um, so you, just like your inlet manifold on a piston engine, uh, you do massive port in to allow more air and more fuel in. What's reliability like? Because in my head, for some reason, I have yeah, these cars yeah. as being unreliable. I there's don't a, know there's a true. myth out there, yeah. So mm. if, you, if you don't service them and you don't keep the maintenance up, it will it will go bang. Uh, just, okay. Ju they, they're, they're more temperamental than a piston engine. You've got to make sure they're well oiled, yeah? Yeah, well oiled, yeah. Mm. So what's the reason for going single turbo rather than continuing with the twin turbo feed? Uh, just what I'm going after in terms of the build. Um, twin turbos are fine for anything up to sort of like 350. 380 horsepower, mm -hmm. which is quick enough in a car like this. I'm still relatively young, so I'd like to just get big whilst I'm young. For how old are you, Sam? 23. <laughs> 23. So, uh, yeah, before like I get you know, motor for 23. Mate. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'd like to make a, a good effort of it whilst I can. Okay. Um, yeah, no, mate. You've got it looking spot on as well. Uh, is it being tuned by anybody? I did have the work done by a rotary tuner. Okay. Um, I wasn't overly happy with the quality of service, right. um, so I have had it apart myself since then. So I've ended up getting it mapped by um, two guys called JD and Stu. Okay. They're quite well known in the industry. Chap guys, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so Stu's from Rotor Talk, mm -hmm. and uh, he works hand in hand with um, uh, Jay, who maps it. Mm -hmm. So a couple of weeks ago I got them to map it up and they sorted all my problems out, so they're spot on really. So so um, it must be quick then, so sorry, you haven't even mentioned the power. Yeah, so it wasn't a dyno run, so it's a road map basically, mm -hmm. uh, so they can get a real feel for how the car's reacting on the actual tarmac yeah. instead of just the rollers. So, they so. do do rolling road days, yeah. so I am hoping to get it on the rollers soon. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the moment, it's just mapped to one bar on the road. Right. Uh, they guess between 400 to 450, but I'll take that with a pinch of salt, really. And this with the face, if there were 276, right? Yeah. In stock form, yeah. about 220. Just under 280 horsepower, well, yeah. Okay. So they're not they're not the massive, massive torquey engines because they're small. Um, but when you really start winding them out, they do feel good to drive. So. Guys, um, just to let you know, looking at this car, it's actually tiny. Like I feel like I could lift it from the side and just roll it over. It's really that small. And what is going on with the body then? Because I haven't seen anything like that. That ain't stock, is it? No, so they're, they're feed style uh, wings. So there's a big uh, RX-7 tuner in Japan mm -hmm. called, uh, I can't even pronounce their name, but it's basically like Fujita Engineering or something like that. Similar like that Vail side sort of. Yeah, like, yeah, they're all the same. Yeah, yeah, they they're all, they're all the same. Yeah, they're all the aftermarket brands in Japan. Yeah. Um, and there's a company in the UK called Concept7, and they make uh, fiberglass versions of the feed wings. So they are the feed wings I've got on there. And uh, wheels, brake suspension? Okay, so wheels, uh, they're Japan racing uh, JR5s. So they're similar to the Volt Race CE28Ns. Okay. Were they lightweight? Or? Yeah, lightweight. Yeah. Um, Razor about two and a half grand plus tyres, right. so I'd rather spend that on the engine to be honest. Yeah. Brakes, uh, they RS brakes are bigger from standard, okay. So they're 314 by 32 mil thick. Yeah. Um, I've got yellow stuff EBC pads front and rear. They're grooved uh, on the on the rears and standards on the front. And you've got some uh, nice side blades. You're running your yeah. armour tyres as well. Yeah. yeah, 88 R's all round. Sweet. What are um, they like? 
sticky they're good yeah. yeah for the power i'm running they're good uh, yeah. if i start getting any more power i reckon i'll have to go up to something like ar1s or yeah. r triple eights or something like that okay. five speed manuals as well yeah, right they did come manual. auto as well didn't they Four speed yeah yeah they did well. have an auto version yeah. yeah the interior you say it's really cramped in size same size as like an mx5 it's quite cushy in there yeah, yeah. um like <laughs> it's smaller than an mx5 mm. and also, uh, a theme within like the Jap 90s cars was quite driver focused yeah um so you know the, the cockpit the surrounds yeah. the driver yeah, yeah. um a bit like the Supra yeah, yeah. not as much as the Supra there. but in there you can tell as soon as you're in the passenger side everything's yeah. orientated towards the driver and are they standard levers that came yeah, in the car red yeah, levers yeah, they, yeah they're original lipstick rx7 seats <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, red leather is quite sought after actually these days. The same as the red carpet. It's got a red carpet in yeah. it as well. So. Mate, I'm absolutely loving this car, man. It's it's beautiful. It's all right. It still it's looks not... so modern. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, what is yeah. it? How, what's it's the like age? How many years? 20 years old. 20 yeah. years old. 1999. It's an early Jeez. 1999. And uh, have you owned anything modern? Uh, I know you're only 23. Well, um, I've got a daily that's a caddy, 2016 yeah. caddy. But apart from that, no. But is there anything we're missing, like exhaust? Okay, well, uh, it's got our magic uh, exhaust system on it. Mm -hmm. It's got custom manifold, custom downpipe. I'll see a decat. Um, so it sounds right. Uh, yeah. It's got the feed style side blades. Uh, it's on BC coilovers. Yeah, sorry, we didn't mention that. Yeah, yeah BC coilovers. Yeah. So it's on BC coilovers. Was it like rotator? Yeah, they're good. I've, I've had to stiffen the damping quite a lot because I've got 20 mil spaces on the front. So yeah. I don't to try and avoid scrubbing on bumps and stuff. I have stiffened yeah. the damping up quite a bit. I've got a carbon spoiler on there. All right, Sam. Let's take it for a spin, yeah. Cool. Let's do it, man. <laughs> researching the cars obviously i leave the owners to do it so you know the last few videos i have been trying to just do a couple of google search i know about these cars anyway but what you need to understand is that since i've been doing youtube right and to maintain and create what i've done with this channel i have not got time to do anything Any apart from edit yeah, yeah, film yeah. edit film edit film yeah. another thing sorry i know we're a bit off topic right now but no. i try to simplify everything because there are people on this channel that don't know much about cars i'm yeah. one of them people i don't know everything about cars and i'm not the most technical but you know i do know half of the questions i'm you asking are, i'm just trying to get yeah. you to you're asking ask. on behalf of those viewers exactly well. yeah i've got like family members that are watching i've got friends that are watching they're glued to this channel and you know it's not because they're diehard car enthusiasts yeah. but i'm always teaching people like that you know just well, you are yeah. you know ask the questions but yeah. yeah no the reason i said that is um yeah i was researching and uh, yeah, this car was actually for sale for around 32 grand. They only ever sold about 210 for three years. Really? And then they had to put the price down to 25k. Oh, okay, so it's so it's, high, yeah. Then it sold like a, do you know what I'm saying? Funny engine style, didn't it? Yeah, well, yeah. this is a 1.3, yeah? yeah? Yeah, When these originally came out, these were like on arrival with like Porsches, like low, low key Porsches. Yeah. So people was like, I'm not buying a Mazda for the same price as a Porsche. Underneath the bonnet, there's two things going round. There's no pistons, like, there's nothing generic about its engine. You it's can totally barely see the engine. It's totally new. Yeah, it's like yeah, there's yeah. a load of it's like, craziness yeah, going it's on. Yeah, it's tiny, literally tiny. The bad thing about it is that you've got to service it a lot because if you don't maintain it, the apex seals will just wear out and then that's basically your compression has just gone. Okay. Once your compression's gone, that's it. You might as well do a rebuild. Expensive to maintain? Um, I try and service it every sort of 3,000 miles, uh, every which is three, changing yeah. the oil. Plugs are about 150 quid. Uh, and then obviously you've got your fuel filter and oil on top, so you're looking at probably about 200 pounds. How long have you owned this vehicle? Just over two years. Okay, and uh, when did you start doing the modifications, like uh, performance related? Under the engine, the start of this year. Uh, okay. Exterior wise, I was, I've been doing it ever since I bought it. So um, before the issues with the modifications, yeah. what was it like? Was there any issues with like reliability? No, I mean, anything going wrong in that year? I had one relay uh, that was a bit intermittent and it was electrical fault. Okay. That occasionally would play up, uh, mm -hmm. you know, but apart from that, it's been spot on. Okay, so, only a hiccup with the mods, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Um, and since having the mods, um, you know, you said you fitted, started fitting some stuff yourself. Yeah, no so, issues. No issues. No issues. Whatsoever. This isn't the final version of this car either, no, is it? No, this is this is the three there's three steps. So the first is obviously single conversion. Yeah. Um, which is what we've got now. Yeah, which and then mapped. Uh, the second will be 
water injection, then another map. You're going to do that next year? Yes, um, and then the third stage is a full engine rebuild. Okay. Uh, I'm restricted at the moment because it's not built. Yeah. So until it's built, then... That's when you need to be yeah. back on the channel. <laughs> That sounds sick. That sounds militant. It's a real precise batter, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But the turbo size is actually quite linear. Like, yeah. there's a bit of lag, but yeah. the delivery is quite smooth. Yeah, very smooth. Yeah. Um, obviously, being like not a massively torquey engine anyway, the power is quite progressive all the way up to the top of the revs. What um, RPM does it rev to? Good. So they, the Mapper JD uh, put a limit of 8,000 on it. 8,000, yeah? So, so these things can rev, can't they? Yeah, like, yeah. If you want. yeah, definitely. It comes on boost probably about four and a half. Um, what was the PSI? Is it 15 PSI? Four, 14 PSI. 14 PSI, yeah. 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 But these turbos, they're good for 30. Yeah. So Guys, the turbo's massive. Yeah. Like, I don't know if we... I think I did get a cutaway, but yeah, you say so, the turbo... Yeah, all the technical guys, they'll know it's a HKS T51R, okay. uh, which is quite a common turbo for like Skyline, Supras, Supras running yeah. sort of 6700 horsepower. Yeah, we're low to the ground as well, aren't we? Yeah. Like, yeah. Definitely, um, as you say, that reminds me just of the Supra, the cockpit. Yeah, it is yeah, kind of yeah. angled at you, like you say. Yeah, yeah no, definitely a, a nice place to be. And uh, for 20 years old, <laughs> look at... What the hell, man? It's like a Porsche turbo back there. <laughs> That's like two potties, like. Because it's like, mate, it's really, really fast. It don't feel slow one bit, but I don't know. I think it's very controlled. Yeah, yeah. As I say, yeah. it's, it's really progressive. Um, it feels massively turbocharged, and that uh, screamer is what is adding to the yeah. excitement yeah. as well. I think. Yeah. I absolutely love the screamer sound. Shit. 
Shit, yeah. Shit. <laughs> Get about eight to the gallon. <laughs> Some people they may not want that, they don't want a car that you can easily put the power down. You've really got to drive this, really got to drive it. That's one thing they said about the RX7s is they're driver's cars. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I'm going to end it as well. Cool. Um, thank you for letting me take it for a spin. No worries. First man to drive it and that, come on. Do you want to plug any social media? Um, just my Instagram really. Um, is FD3 RX7 um, yeah. and also Stuart at Rotor Talk, uh, who is the guy who basically sorted this out for me, yeah. uh, mapped it up with JD and made it what it is today basically. So cool. Yeah. So yeah guys as always I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did please hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you're new to the channel and I'll see you soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.